Wow. We look so cute. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Hey guys, welcome or welcome back to my YouTube channel in case you're new here. Hi, my name is Obosha and welcome to the Slay Squad. I'm coming to you guys today barefaced so you know we're doing a makeup video. Recently, I got a request to do um, a beginner's... I don't know why... <laughs> what was that? <laughs> <laughs> I got a request recently on my DM to do a video for beginners so that's what we're going to be doing today a very simple everyday look for beginners I'm going to try and be as detailed as possible so if you're starting out on makeup now that we're in lockdown you have all the time to practice baby <laughs> so use this video Let's get into it. So I've brought you guys in a bit closer so that you can be able to see my face very nice and clearly be up in your space. And I feel like it's important for me to state that my style of makeup is very um, simple and natural. Meaning whether I use two products or I pack on 20 products at the end of the day, I don't want to look like I have those 20 products. So it's very trying to accentuate what you already have as opposed to hiding it behind makeup. So let's go. I always start with my eyebrows. You can start with your foundation. The order really does not matter as long as your technique is on point. So actually it reminds me of this time when I was in makeup school. I used to have this hairstyle that covered one of my eyes and I hated learning how to do eyebrows so much. So I'd only do this one eyebrow and then I'd leave this other one undone. And if the wind blew, man, me, I just did not even care because trying to get them to look the same used to be a struggle. So yeah just so that i can encourage you out there somewhere know that we all start somewhere and if you keep practicing you're going to improve and one thing that really helped me is learning how to shape the eyebrows just to remove the excess hairs that are underneath like that and above what i use is a razor like this one right here it comes in a pack you can get them from super cosmetics and i just right now i don't think i need any work underneath this is actually the second time i'm filming this video <laughs> and the first time i nicked myself here so these are really 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 sharp be careful with them so what you want to do is just hold your eyebrow like that and then go underneath and remove the excess hairs don't do your eyebrows until it's one line nana you want to look good even when you don't have makeup on so just make sure you're concentrating on removing the hairs that are not needed there that look out of place okay so once your eyebrows are nice and shaped what you want to do is get your eyebrow pencil the one that i'm going to be using today is by maybelline it's the ultra slim brow pencil the reason that i like this pencil is because it's really sharp like the pencil itself it's 0 0.5 it's 1.5 millimeters and it always stays like that really nice and sharp so the key is having your pencil be really really nice and sharp if this is a bit out of your budget you can of course always use the davis pencil this is how the Davis pencil looks like. You can also get it from Super Cosmetics. It shouldn't go for more than, eh, but prices are standard. It shouldn't be more than a hundred shillings. The shade that I'd recommend is Davis number zero four zero zero forty. Everyone right now is using number 003, but I'm telling you guys, 040 has given me a more natural finish when it comes to my brows. But of course, it depends with how um, your natural hair color is like. So just go with one that suits the natural color best. So first things first, just brush them into position like that. And if they're long, you also want to just them in line like that and then now it's really simple you just go in and draw a line at the beginning my eyebrows are microbladed so this is really <laughs> simple for me unfortunately but then it, it's the same steps even if your eyebrows are not microbladed just do the line at the top and the bottom like that see and then you go in let me take my mirror right here and then you go in and you fill in anywhere that is sparse and the key with this is you want to keep on brushing as you 
fill in because the brushing think of the brushing sort of like blending for your eyebrows until you are satisfied and you can't see any sparse lines when you're filling in the inside go in with short quick strokes like that because that mimics um hair how hair grows like that okay so both eyebrows are now filled in and if you were keen enough while you are doing this you can just leave your eyebrow like this if you are nice and neat with it and the key with being nice and neat with it is using a sharp pencil you can go without um, cleaning things up with concealer but i like when everything looks nice and crisp so i'm still going to go ahead and use concealer to clean up uh, the eyebrows and make them nice and crisp the concealer that i'm going to be using today is by maybelline this is the fit me concealer another tip is to use a concealer that is the same shade as your skin or you can also use your foundation shade for this step as well and the reason for this is when you're starting off with makeup blending is usually one of the hardest bits to master in the beginning the very beginning and so using a shade that is really close to your concealer shade <laughs> and if you're using a shade that's really close to your foundation shade then blending becomes really really easy for you and with this i'm also going to be using an angled brush an angled brush just works best for this trust me <laughs> so what i'm going to do is i'll put some at the back of my hand like that and then i can you see i just dab both sides of the brush you also don't don't want to use too much product and then you just clean up at the bottom of your brows so you just the same way you were doing with the bottom line you just go in there and like that Okay, so now comes the blending please do not leave your eyebrows like this go in and blend so with the same brush just rub off any excess that might be left on there and then slowly just go in and drag the foundation or the concealer downwards When it comes to the top of the eyebrow i really really recommend you going in with a shade that completely matches your skin because it's harder to blend it out up there again just slowly Then lastly, you want to take your brush and just comb out the beginning to give that faded look at the front of the brow and to remove all the boxiness that might be there. And that is basically it. You have nice, simple, everyday eyebrows and once you practice enough, it shouldn't take you that long. So next up, we're moving to the face. Make sure that your face is well prepped. And by well prepped, I mean you have cleansed it. Please use soap. <laughs> it's not a, a question, it's not optional. You have to use soap after you've cleansed your face moisturize and then make sure you've used your sunscreen and let that sit in for a couple of minutes before you do your makeup that way it sinks nicely into the skin and you're not just rubbing it off when you're doing your makeup then number two primer primer is not optional please make sure you use your primer underneath foundation and there are different types of primers depending on your skin type so if you have dry skin then you want to go for primers that say things like illuminating or hydrating um, an example of an illuminating primer that i have here is by maybelline this is the face studio prime illuminating primer if you have more oily skin then you want to go for primers that have the words matte in them mattifying 
soft matte like the one that I have here by Fenty Beauty. This one is a soft matte so it's not that bad for people with dry skin like myself but then if you want to, if you have really oily skin then go for one that just says mattifying. Mattifying primer that's what you want and then if you have um, a lot of pores you look at your skin and it looks like it has dot dots right over here mainly and you also have fine lines then you want to go for a pore erasing primer pore erasing primers usually look like petroleum jelly so if i put some of it on my hand there you can see i don't even know if you can see it clearly but it's right this thing keeps focusing on my face uh, yeah it's right there it looks like petroleum jelly then that way it enters into all the creases nikama kuzibaki raka kwa ukuta before they put the um what is it called the paint like that so for me i'm going to go in with this for erasing one over here because i usually have smile lines for days i'm a happy child and i also like to go with it underneath my eyes a bit so that it can settle into those fine lines i don't think i really have any large pores so i don't think it's necessary to go with it everywhere throughout my face okay so i'm just using a brush to push the primer into those fine lines you can use your fingers i'm just used to using the brush so <laughs> i'm also going to use it and for the rest of my face i'm going to use the fenty beauty soft matte primer this is the pro filter primer which forehead to my cheeks and then blend wow i think i've gone overboard with the primer So now moving on to foundation again with foundation you want to go with one that's suitable for your skin type if you're dry <laughs> like i am you want something really nice and moisturizing my favorite one is the tint idol but it's quite on the higher end if you want something a bit more lower then i would recommend the maybelline fit me it says that it's for normal to oily skin but i like the finish that it leaves with my dry skin if you have oily skin then you want to go with something much Fine. something that i can recommend is the black opal two color foundation the revlon color stay as well um fenty beauty the soft matte foundation also is good if you have combination skin another foundation that can work if you have dry skin is the black opal stick foundations stick foundations are also really nice and creamy so they're good when it comes to hydrating the skin Always make sure that you shake your foundation before you start applying it in case anything is settling at the bottom. Today I'm going to be using the Black Opal True Color Foundation just to switch it up a bit on my channel because I don't think I've used this in a while. Then you want to start applying from... Let me put it at the back of my hand first. Okay, you want to start applying your foundation at the center while you blend outwards don't put too much foundation on remember the work of foundation is to even your skin tone and not to cover up dark spots dark circles anything dark so use foundation what it's meant for if you put too much while you're trying to cover up um parts of your skin then it won't it'll look very cakey and hey i'm looking at this foundation i'm like did i stop using it because <laughs> it's too light it looks like it's blending out quite well i think i can make it work yeah let's go on and use it but if you want the best way to test um whether foundation is the right shade for you match it right here in between your neck and your chest right there because if you use um your face shade 100 percent then you look like you have a floating head but if you use your chest shade a hundred percent then now you will look like your neck is off so you want to use a shade that's in between your chest and your neck right here so if i apply some of this there you want it to blend in completely actually in your potter yeah if you can see clearly i'm trying to stand on my tippy toes but you want the foundation to completely disappear then that's the shade you go for I did by mistake. 
but when it comes to blending sis please <laughs> take your time take your nice sweet sweet time whether you choose to blend with a brush with a beauty blender take your time and completely blend make sure you've gone into all creases you know on the side of your nose make sure you get your ear right there go as close as possible to your hairline make sure you also go like this just make sure that someone cannot tell where your foundation is beginning and ending blend 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 and as you can see like i said the foundation is matte so you can see my face is looking really really matte so if you like a matte finish with foundation definitely try out that black opal one and the coverage i'd say is medium to full maybe medium buildable let's say medium buildable coverage because it's really covered <laughs> everything only with a few um dabs of the foundation in there also one more thing um while you're doing that when all the product is already on your face with your foundation brush go like this on the beginning parts of your eyebrows it just really helps with making it look nice and soft and giving it that gradient look not don't go with it when your foundation when your brush is full of foundation and then you're like oh abosha look at me now i need to start all over again with my eyebrows no no do it when you're completely done blending and there's almost no product on the brush it gives you a really nice feathery look and i love it now we move into concealer so during this step is when you'd go in and fix in quotes because queen you don't need fixing <laughs> and um, try to cover up any dark spots or scars that you might have so let's say if i had a spot here then i go in with a concealer that my that's my shade put it there concentrating on that one spot and then dabbing it for me the concealer has really evened out my skin i don't think i have any dark spots to demonstrate this but should i have a model one day i will be very glad to show you guys how to do that um then as you can see foundation makes your face look very monotone it's removed any highlights low lights contours that you might have in your skin so now we need to put them back so the first thing we're going to do is highlighting so highlighting brings back light to um, your face basically where the light hits first when your face is hit is where you want to go in with your highlighter to highlight i'm using um not really highlighter but rather concealer but that's a few shades lighter go maybe one shade lighter if you want you know a more natural look two shades lighter if you want it to be more popping and so on and so forth but don't go too light because then down here you will look white incredibly ghostish white so don't go too low i like mine in between so the concealer that i'm going to be using today is by maybelline this is their instant age rewind please <laughs> i remember the name of the concealer and mine is in the shade 10 caramel so i'm just going to twist it up a bit and then i'll apply like that I don't go too close underneath my eye because if you put too much product under there then it will start to crease so i put it low and then i blend it upwards and then you want to go with it up here so that it can lift your eye like that like that scratch and a bit over there and then i'm going to get some of it there over here as well and over here then the same way we have put um, highlights on our face we want to put contours and shadows back into the face you can use a concealer for this but i like to use a foundation stick the foundation stick that i'm going to be using today is by black opal in the, in the shade said <laughs> in the shade suede mocha and you want to go with it right there if you do you'll see where naturally you have um contours on your cheek you go there and then on your forehead as well the further down you put your contour shade the further the less big your forehead looks so for example if already you have a small forehead you only want to contour maybe one line there one line there but those of us baby 
<laughs> the blessed children of the Lord, you just just go all around. Please just go everywhere. You need it. <laughs> um, another place that you can place this contour shade is right here on your jawline to make it look, you know, sculpted and on your nose as well. But I don't really quite like to use um, a contour stick for that on my nose so i'm not going to do it but if you want to do it you can do it so one thing that i like to do as i'm blending is i go back in with this brush this is the brush that we use to apply foundation so i go in in between where we've applied the product and some of the product that is remaining on the brush will help with blending so that there's no line of demarcation in between my highlight and my contour so just in between then just to show you how dedicated to blending i usually am now i go in with the beauty blender to just blend everything one more time to make it look seamless i have this jar of beauty blenders i got them from jumia for i think around 700 kenyan shillings they come five big ones but the big ones are dirty and three small ones but one small one is dirty as well so yeah i'll leave it linked in the description bar which reminds me i have a jumia discount code april wabosha only valid during the month of april 2021 so yeah if you want to get yourself um these sponges you can save yourself 200 shillings that means you'll have gotten it for 500 well, guys <laughs> literally run before the end just search for beauty blenders it's what i searched for and i got this whole pack when you're using your beauty blend beauty blenders <laughs> oh god when you're using your beauty blenders you don't want to use it when it's dry because when it's dry you will be removing the makeup from your face to the sponge remember when we learned about um saturation in science and stuff anyways the point is <laughs> don't use your beauty blender when it's dry so i use a setting spray and i just not a setting spray a uh, spray with water it's just kawaida water in here and then i spray the beauty blender but make sure it's not dripping wet you don't want to put a wet beauty blender directly on your face if you're not sure after you've wet it you can go ahead and use um, a paper towel a serviette a t-shirt that's in the laundry basket and just um ring it kidogo so that it's not too wet and then i will spray my face one more time just because i feel like it's really really matte again i keep please don't end please don't end okay, then now i just go in i like this blender because it has this sharp end i can go underneath my eyes you want to use your magnified mirror for this when you're doing your last blend so that you can see that everything is nice and in position Baby, we are literally unclockable. Listen, no one can tell you where your foundation starts, where it ends, but it takes time. So wake up earlier if you need to, but take your time when it comes to blending. Now we're going to move on into the powders to set the foundation that we have used. A simple rule to follow is when you use a cream or a liquid product, you need to go in with a powder to set it into position. So the powder that I'm going to be using today is by Sasha Buttercup and I'm going to be using this underneath my eyes. As you can see, it looks yellowish and that's so that i can be able to maintain the brightness that i'm trying to bring out underneath my eyes and all the other points that we have highlighted another option of a powder you can use is the one by laura Mercier. i've not yet personally tried it but it has tons of good reviews so i'm just going to press a bit into my beauty blender like that and then i'm going to dab the excess behind my hand because i don't want to go um, in with too much product and when you're doing this make sure you blend again underneath your eyes just to remove any creasing that might be there because once you put this powder <laughs> it's going to be really hard to fix anything underneath so yeah just make sure you blend everything right and then you press the powder as close as possible to your lash line And then we're going to go in everywhere that we put 
the highlight shade as we press it into the skin. You can also go in um, where your smile lines usually are and just set it completely. Then now to set where we put the darker shades, I'm going to go in with a darker powder. The powder that I'm using is by Sleek. The shade <laughs> rubbed off such a long time ago. So you just go in there and set your contour shade or your bronzing shade make sure you go into your hairline especially here that way you can't tell where the foundation starts and ends again on your cheeks like that and down here then to blend everything together and to set the rest of the face you're going to go in with a powder that is your skin tone because you can see over here you can clearly see where i've placed the yellow powder so this step will help just to blend everything together and for that i'm using the revlon color stay pressed powder in the shade caramel one just put a bit on your brush and lightly go on top setting your entire face and making sure the two powders are well blended so at this stage is when you want to set your um, eyelids as well i don't know if you can see but i'm sure there's some creasing in there because naturally your eyes have folds and so if you put a cream product and you open your eye it's going to enter inside the folds of your eyes so just blend that before you put um, the powder on there to set it so that you don't go throughout the day having creases on your eyelid there and on the other side as well if you'd like to use blush this is the step to take out your blush palette if you don't have your a blush palette why not you can take advantage of the colors you have in your eyeshadow palettes a color that i like especially for dark skin as blush is an orange i think orange shades work really really well so for this i'm going to go into my james charles um, morphe palette and i'm going to use this orange shade right here make sure to dab you see how our hand has a lot of excess product just keep <laughs> putting all excess product at the back of your hand and then slowly putting on the blush one rule i have for blush don't do this and then you put it here because sis, the whole day you're not going to be like this sometimes you're going to you know go back into position so apply it when you're relaxed that way it looks good even when you're not smiling that's like my hugest blush tip and if you ever feel like you've gone in with too much blush don't panic go in with your face powder or first try it with just your powder brush without any extra product and just brush over it and it reduces the amount of blush that you have put on then finally you want to set your face this helps with um soaking up all those powdered products that you've added on top so that your face doesn't stay looking all ashy and powdery and it also helps to keep the makeup in place so again your setting spray of choice just drench aki inaisha you guys inaisha <laughs> inaisha i'm devastated oh there we go and then you press it just use the back of my sponge i let it sit for like a few seconds and then i go ahead and do that if you if you're usually um heavy-handed with your setting spray let it me a bit like let it sit in in a bit so that when you're doing this step you're not taking off the makeup with your sponge like that So next we're going to go in with a highlighter this highlighter is different from the under eye one this one goes on the high points of the face like here here 
here as well don't go ham with your highlighter you want it to look nice and blended as well as don't put it in areas that you don't want to to bring too much attention to for example if i had a pimple right here and i worked so hard to cover it up with concealer don't go over it with so much highlight because then you draw attention to that one spot maybelline has the best highlighters the maybelline master chrome highlighters hands down some of the most illuminating blinding highlight shades that are there they have different shades depending on what you want to go for i have <coughs> let me just show you guys i have a bunch of them and this is not even like the only ones i have like this one right here is really nice if you're going for a more natural highlight but today the one that we're going to be using is this one right here this is the maybelline master chrome in the shade molten gold it's one of my favorite ones when i want to blind but but be a bit subtle so what you want to do with this is take a bit on your fan brush and apply it on the highest points of your face i realized when i'm filming you can't really see my highlighters well <laughs> no matter how much i pile them and that's why i tried to do a swatch for you guys so that you can see it nicely and again i am obsessed with blending so i have to go in with another brush just to make sure everything is blending nice and seamless you can also apply your highlight right here on your cupid's bow and it looks really nice after you've done your lip don't worry when i put on my lipstick of course it won't be here on my lips another place that you can place your highlight shade is on your inner corners just like that and i like to do this before eyeliner so that the eyeliner can be at the bottom of the highlight shade so in the spirit of trying to keep this as beginner friendly as possible i won't do eyeshadow for this look but if you guys would like a really really simplified eyeshadow look let me know so i'm just going to go in with the same color that we used to set the bronzer and everything i'm just going to go with that onto the crease of my eye like that just so that also my eye doesn't remain looking very one-dimensional But what we can do today is apply lashes let me tell you the quickest way to get your look from zero to a hundred real real quick is just to put on a pair of eyelashes i buy mine in packs so this one is the number um 48 i ordered it from jumia as well and as you can see this is the one that i have it's really old i'll explain why it has this mess behind here in a bit so when it comes to lash glue what i'd recommend is duo lash glue the one that i have here is one that i picked up from super cosmetics a while ago i really do not recommend it but then i need to use it it needs to end <laughs> to end so this is what i'm going to use now if you're a beginner the easiest way to put on your lashes it is to put the glue directly on your lash line and then apply the lash so if you can get an eyelash glue that has a wand at the end this will also make this step really easy but if you don't have that then i'm going to show you how i work with this one that i have so the reason why the back of my tin is really dirty is because what i do is i take my lash glue and i just put some of it on the back of this container it doesn't touch um, the lashes when I'm done so it works perfectly so I'm going to be using a really small brush like this and then I'll dip in I haven't forgotten where I put okay, found it so I'm going to dip in to the eyelash glue and immediately you're done with this process so that you don't ruin your brush you want to just use some oil and remove the glue off the brush that way you're able to use the brush for other things but i only use this for liner so i don't mind if it gets stuck like that and then on your lash line preferably do use your magnified mirror as if you're applying eyeliner just go in really short strokes like that as close as possible to your lash line it's almost like you're just stamping the glue on there then what you want to do is take I'm recording 
Then what you want to do is take your eyelash on your tweezers. If you prefer to use your hands, you can as well, but it's really much simpler with the tweezers. Hold the eyelash at the center. Make sure you give this glue about just 30 seconds to get a bit tacky. And then you aim and place it right there at the center. And then you fix the ends. And literally that's it. <laughs> is it stuck? Yep, it is. So then to make sure um, it's nice and in there, you want to go in and just press the ends like that. Oh, yo, my eyes tearing. <laughs> So next up we have eyeliner. I'm personally going to be using a gel liner by Inglot but you can also use a pencil. One that I'd recommend is by Maybelline, the Kajal Colossal Pencil. It lasts really really long and it doesn't smudge. I love it. So I'm just going to go on my waterline with this pencil. I mean with a gel not pencil. Ooh, I put too much and it smudged end but I'm going to fix it I think I put too much on this brush shoe wally and we were finished with makeup it's because again my camera is dying and I'm starting to rush and now I'm messing up and then you want to go in here as well so that you can't see where the lash glue starts and stops and on your waterline as well So another place you want to go in is right here underneath your eye like that slowly just creating a line and what that helps with is to conceal the, la the lash band nicely and also if some glue um, came out you put too much glue and it's showing at the top putting that line on top on your lash band really helps not a thick line just really really nice and close to your lashes your bottom lashes also need some mascara so today we're going in with a colossal mascara by maybelline and we just put it in there if you don't make a face are you really applying mascara okay so if you get mascara on your foundation don't panic what you want to do is get your face powder and a q-tip put some on there this is the same way that i fixed that gel liner and then you just dab make sure it has dried fast and then you just dab it off and it comes right off next up we're going to be doing lips now when you're starting out in makeup the two lipsticks that i'd recommend is a nice bold red lipstick it's, it does the same thing as lashes it just quickly elevates your look and also a nice nude everyday lip combo so for today i'm going in with the um LA colors lip liner i cut and my neighbors have decided it is music time so in case you can hear anything please excuse that so i go in with that like that and into the corners i don't know why my lips are starting to look ashy right now <laughs> when the video is ending then we're going to go in with the lipstick. What I'm using is City Color Chick in the color N3 already taken. And I put that especially on the center. Dub dub. And then a gloss. This is the Fenty Beauty gloss in the shade Fenty Glow. And we have a look. 
so this is our finished look it's really nice and simple and quick if you have the hang of everything so make sure you practice you'll definitely get better with practice if you have any questions do leave them down below in the comment section for me and remember that i will try and list everything that i have used in this video down below in the description box always remember to work hard have good intentions and i will see you guys on the next one bye